in all countries, east or west, developed or developing, the high and humble, the educated and ignorant, progressives and conventional, all alike have chosen since times immemorial to seek solace and guidance from the revelations of the occult oracle. In ancient times, man was far more fatalistic and his reliance on destiny much more overwhelming than today. No wonder the tribe of inspired interpreters, soothsayers, astrologers, destiny doctors flourished and thrived. Today, man assumes he is the architect of his own fate and is cynical or sceptical of the inexplicable influence of destiny. Not everybody today seeks counsel from the Oracle of Delphi, or pursues the Jyotish Pundit to decipher the Natal or Chalit horoscope, interpret the intricacies of the palm pattern, delve into the nuances of numerology or purview phrenology, search for the rare chart readings of the Vrigu Samhita, gaze into the crystal ball or try out the mysteries of the planchet to foresee the shape of things to come. And yet, if the truth is told, many still do, overtly or covertly. Even with our current command of science and technology, our considerable knowledge and understanding of the universe and its environments, of nature, its elements and forces, of planets and satellites, and our claim to the ability of shaping and predetermining our ultimate destiny, we still find that what finally happens is not of our own reckoning thoughts, wishes, deeds, misdeeds, actions or activities. Call it the will of God, the work of destiny, or the inscrutable ways of providence, Things often happen in a manner that eludes or baffles scientific or common sense explanation or diagnosis. This may perhaps be why, even today, mighty potentates, lofty leaders, powerful politicians, practical people, pragmatic businessmen, elite and plebeian, all alike, do take recourse openly or surreptitiously, sooner or later, to the arena of astrology and delve into the depths of its mystery by recourse to the annals of its archives and appraisal of its almanac. 